Hello everyone, I hope that you are doing well. This is me Sayyaj Shriyatullah. Welcome to Achievers Academy. Today, we will be discussing about very important aspect with respect to Group 1's main examination. So today is our agenda to discuss three important topics. Three important areas I am going to cover. First is new pattern of questions and answer writing released by TSPAC means what is the pattern of asking the question whether you are getting internal choice or you are not getting internal choice and how the breakage of question is there with respect to subject wise that we are going to learn this is the first area we are going to cover and addition of topics in the group one syllabus this is the second topic and will be taken in the last or it may also be there with you okay we will see that we can go ahead with this or not but this is what we are starting then the next one very 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 important for all the group one mains examination okay aspirants model question and answer discussion how to write a model question and answer for the group one mains examination the third area is very very important okay right so those who are aware of this fact you can just skip this video okay because there is a proper heading is there so little bit of fast forwarding you can do and you can go with this particular topic or else those who are very new and wanted to even uh, understand the model of uh, uh, and pattern of question and answers okay from me also they can stay tuned and don't go anywhere please stick to the video because it is definitely going to be helpful for your examination it will definitely add value to it okay fine so general essay you can see here every paper in our group one mains examination consists of 150 marks so general essay is also 150 marks so here there is not much change is there with respect to what previous uh, uh, model of question paper so that's why little bit of smiley saying that yes oh my god this is, we are we are escaped okay we are at least literally we are happy at least in this case okay so general essay is again having three sections section one section two section three every section will have three questions and you have to answer only one so three questions will be given you have to answer one whatever you are perfect in that okay section two same three questions will be given you have to ask number one section three three questions will be given again you have to ask only one question so basically 50 marks 50 marks 50 marks every question carry one marks every answer carry one mark so 50 50 50 you will get 150 marks so very easy one remember this point this is a very important tip that i am giving to you if there are direct questions answer it if there are direct question answer it so but why because if you are answering some indirect question no you cannot articulate properly given the time that you are having it is very difficult that you can articulate a open-ended question in general essay so when something is very direct okay then you definitely you have to answer that one so that at least you will know that these many components you have covered and this much you have written which is exact and apt for the examination point of view okay so have this step will be helpful in the examination now if you see the paper 2 paper 2 general essay is paper 1 then we are having paper 2 paper 2 has this syllabus history culture geography so one section second section third section so completely in history three section one section culture one section geography one section so the total paper consists of three sections history one section culture second section geography third section so again here having three sections are there okay each section consists of five questions here five questions here five questions here five questions 5 into 10 50 marks 5 into 10 50 marks 5 into 10 50 marks 50 marks 50 marks 50 marks total 150 marks so here you have to answer 5 here you have to answer 5 here you have to answer 5 now the question here is 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 do we have to attempt only 5 questions are given and you have to attempt all here only 5 questions are given you have to attempt all 
इज इट लाइक दिस और डू यू हैव इंटरनल चॉइस डू यू हैव वॉट इंटरनल चॉइस इट मीन्स एट क्वेश्चन आर गिवेन इन फर्स्ट सेक्शन एंड यू आर आस्ट टू आंसर ओनली फाइव सेकेंड सेक्शन अगेन एट क्वेश्चन आर गिवेन एंड यू हैव टू आंसर ओनली फाइव थर्ड सेक्शन एट क्वेश्चन आर गिवेन एंड यू हैव टू आंसर ओनली फाइव इज इट द पैटर्न इज दैट कंपल्सरी यू हैव टू आंसर ऑल और the second model of asking is whether you are given a internal choice whether you are given a internal choice okay for that purpose i have given very clearly here the little bit of it is a mix of both our group 1 tspsc thought that no we should not make the questions all compulsory nor we should give every question as internal choice as internal choice let us make a hybrid model of uh, mains question paper okay so what they have done in history and culture of india history and culture of india first question second question compulsory you have to answer third question will be given internal choice fourth question will be given internal choice fifth question will be given internal choice this is how the paper is very beautiful paper is there now it becomes very competitive among the students okay to study and to write the to uh, like uh, to study the total syllabus now before what you used to do is like out of 5 units if you study only 4 also that would have been enough why because fifth unit you can uh, leave it in what internal choice now it is not like that he has not specified that which unit he will pick up in compulsory which unit he will pick up in what internal choice so we are unaware of this fact it means every student have to read the syllabus thoroughly end to end completely means you have to have the complete understanding of and complete learning of the group 1 syllabus in the same way sixth question is compulsory seventh question is compulsory eighth ninth tenth will be given internal choice 11th question is compulsory 12th question is compulsory 13 14 15 was given what internal choice okay so 10 marks 10 marks 10 10 10 50 10. then here also 50 here also 50 total 150 marks okay the first section is of india second section is of telangana okay then third section is of geography both are history one is geography right so i guess this is very very clear to all of you that how the question paper okay will be there in the mains examination right first second every section every section of all papers every section of all papers first second compulsory third fourth fifth internal choice fifth sixth seventh compulsory then eighth ninth tenth internal choice 11 12th compulsory 13 14 15 you are having what internal choice i guess this is clear to you okay now as the news was there in the newspapers also that tspsc is going to make the examination pattern difficult imagine one point here lot of test series main test series i have seen but all the test series whatever is available in the local market it's all about direct questions are given what are the administration reforms of salarjan write the brief about salajan reforms okay what is the physiography of india explain it like that question also direct question also you will not get it mark my words direct question also you will not get it compulsory questions you may get direct question but internal choice question will not be direct they both are very much analytical they will ask for sure okay so you have to understand that you should prepare little bit more in a analytical way more in a deduction way and you have to prepare in such a way that a particular topic is having all the components are covered legal components social components economic components religion components caste components ethnicity components data facts committees all these components should be there in your answer okay and if you are having this kind of understanding of a particular topic then only it is easy to, easy for you to answer otherwise analytical questions is very hard to we can get through so make sure that you are following the complete test series whatever we are having on the achievers you are following it and uh, basically i will give you more of the 
uh, analytical questions direct questions anyhow will be discussed but analytical questions also we are going to focus in a very very elaborate manner so that none of you will be like shocked or blanked in the examination that is what my basic intention is there here okay now now we are going ahead with very very important uh, uh, area that is nothing but discussion of model question and answer how we are going to do it in our class and how the questions are framed we are here model question and answer let us see two model question and answer i am discussing it let us see how it is how we are going to do this okay youth has the potential to change the world for better right or wrong we always say that hamare bache hamare ghar ko aage badhayenge in the same way the government and the national sing that yes the youth are going to be the future bearer of the country's responsibility right or wrong yes youth has the potential to change the world for better harnessing the potential of youth for economic opportunities is the key role of is the role of key stakeholders in the light of this discuss various measures to harness the potential of youth okay now they talked about youth here they talked about youth here and they have linked the youth with potential of youth for economic opportunities means you are in the age group of 18 to 59 years basically understand 18 to 30 years you are there you are in the age group of 18 to 30 years what is that you majorly require now what is that you majorly require now in your life so all of you will say that yes sir we want a job because this is the age of job after your studies if you are doing pg21 after whatever it is so youth is directly linked with what job and in economy if the jobs are not available where we should go all of will all of us will take coaching competitive examination right that is what we do now that is what the country's youth is doing the good youth is in the coaching centers the not so good youth they are rallying behind what political parties and just having fun with the political system right or wrong yes okay but here why this is happening the youth rallying behind radicalism separatism whatever it is and the youth rallying after what the coaching institution institution is because lack of job opportunities in the economy economy is not creating jobs suppose you are an engineering graduate the moment you passed out campus selection happened enough jobs are available companies have come out of 100 students 70 80 students are happily placed with a good amount of salary of like 35 40000 in 22 years wouldn't you take it you will take it right or wrong yes then you will not be in the coaching centers right or wrong very right so this is what i want to say your concept is important then only you can go ahead with the answer writing so youth is always linked with what economic opportunities okay and economic opportunities should be created by what key stakeholders means who should create economic opportunities can i create economic opportunities can you create economic opportunities no sir it is the state government should create economic opportunities it is the central government should create economic opportunities private sector should create what economic opportunities means both public and private sector these are the both two important key stakeholders which can provide us economic opportunities job opportunities if they fail to do so youth is doing nothing in the country right or wrong so we have to harness the potential of the youth we cannot leave our youth like that okay right so in the light of this discuss various measures to harness the potential of youth means after knowing that we have lot of youth in our country after knowing that you the government and the key stakeholders cannot uh, put a blind eye right that's why what measures are taken by the government of india government of telangana okay to promote economic opportunities for the youth okay now the question here is do you have the youth in our country that is important do you have the youth in our country that is called as demographic dividend yes we have youth in our country india is considered to be the youngest state in the world with the average age of 28 years average age of 28 years so india is having enough youth and the youth is suffering from two problems youth is suffering from two problems the youth the age group 
the individuals in the age group first they are suffering from skilling lot of youth in our country is not skilled they don't know how to complete a task if i give a ac to repair they cannot do that if i give a motor bike to repair they cannot do that if i give a micro oven to repair they cannot do that if i give them some accounts related aspect they cannot do that if i give them a device and ask them to try to write something on the ms word they cannot do that right so youth in our country some of the majority of the youth are suffering from what skilling they don't have any skills to work any skills to complete a task they are all unskilled means they can do jhadu pocha sweeping cleaning dusting that's all they know okay so then another problem with the youth is what okay low skilled first of all youth is unskilled they don't know any kind of skill low skill means low skill in the sense is whatever you have learned in your academics it is not being sought by the industries not being sought by the industries means your skills are not matching to the industrial requirements okay for that purpose you have to go for reskilling or not yes unskilled should be given skilled low skill should be given what reskilling means you have to give some more better efficient skills to them so that their skills matches to the industrial requirements and they don't go and source in some other country and they don't establish their uh, uh, what industries or companies in some other country saying that you don't have the workforce that can help us so we wanted to reskill our low skilled people so that uh, the companies which are coming to our country or, or, or to our telangana they will feel that yes we are having a sufficient workforce and they are all skilled with respect to our requirements so that is the reason we can have the jobs okay unskilled low skill should be given reskill and the last one is upskilling upskilling right upskilling means i know c plus i know i have reskilled it c plus plus but now there is another one is there salesforce okay big data hadoop like that is there so that is called as upskilling means increase your skills if you know data analytics know also artificial intelligence if you know robotics also know artificial intelligence if you know it what will happen our youth will become our existing workforce will become more expertise and lot of investment will come in our country this is called as upskilling up your skills okay upskilling will increase your employability upskilling will increase your employability means if not here you can find jobs in some other countries again you will send remittances to our country again these remittances again we will use for the development and the investment in our country right or wrong yes so you can understand that if if a youth is harnessed in this way our country will become what a gold digger in the world itself okay so that is why harnessing the youth capabilities are very very important so this is the concept you should know okay to approach this question what can we do a beautiful introduction we have to write see how beautifully i have taken up the introduction according to united nations very important to quote the reports population fund the economic growth you have to underline this all part the economic growth that results due to shift in population structure shift in population structure means what the population is like this children's are 40% okay adults are 20% children's are 40% adults are 20% and uh, 40 50 60 40% are old people this is not the uh, what type of uh, Uh, population grid we are actually desiring okay this particular country having this kind of population pyramid will not grow okay we want this bulge okay lower percentage of old lower percentage of children this is where we require the adult adult age group okay so when a country moves from this this situation to the this situation they will have the opportunity to pull the economic growth they will have the opportunity to pull the economic growth that's why it is very clearly said according to united nation population fund the economic growth that results the economic growth that result due to shift in population structure towards adult age group is called as demographic dividend 
India is home to 1.38 billion people with a median age of 21 years. Okay, and we are going to be the youngest population in the world. According to the Telangana Abstract Statistics 2021, currently Telangana is having 43.6% of population in Telangana is in between the age group of 15 to 14 years. So how beautifully I have presented the introduction you just see. I have given what is the definition of how this youth can transfer and can push the economic growth I have given very properly here. Means according to United Nations Population Fund, our theory is right. India is having the youth? Yes. Telangana is having the youth? Yes. Okay. It means our state is also, Telangana is very young, has a good population, dividend. Okay. And the main challenge would be what? For youth, what we should create? We should create what? Jobs. Then they will become assets which can involve in what production. I know a skill, I can work in automobile sector. I know a skill, I can work in electronic sector. I know a skill, I can work in textile sector. So we will become productive asset or not? Yes, because we are, we are able to get employed. That is only called as productive asset, right? So this youth which is unskilled, we require reskilling. First of all, government has to invest them, invest in them, give them skill, give them reskill, make them upskill. Government should invest in them. The time period will take a long period of time. Investment is required. All the youth should be given all the skilling, upskilling, reskilling. It requires a lot of time. But once they are given, once we harness their capabilities, we'll get dividends in the future. Invest today in youth. Tomorrow you will see what? Dividend. Tomorrow you will say dividend. Invest today. The fruits will be divided at the end. Means division of fruits among the society will happen that is called as demography will give fruits in future if you invest in today it means the youth will give you very good economic growth and a very good okay progressive society if you invest in today so i have properly given this introduction after writing the introduction you have to write the body of content body of content second this is the first para body of content when you start that will be the second para relation between economic growth you have to write with this cycle how economic growth could be powered by demographic dividend that you have to say in a very graphical manner flow chart which i will give you in the in our notes and while explanation so you have to say that how the demography will power economic growth that relation you have to see and third paragraph will be what are the impediments means what are the challenges to the demographic dividend means a country is having good amount of youth population, 40% of the population is youth, but it's still they are not able to harness. Why? Unskilling. Unskill is one. Illiteracy. Illiteracy. Gender disparity. Women are not allowed to work. Women is also a part of workforce or not? Yes. So there are some factors. Even if you are having good structure of demography like this, population structure of demography like this, it will not give you fruits not give you fruits because of what illiteracy because of what unskilled because of what gender disparity because of what social taboos it will, it will not be given geographical immobility geographical immobility so you have to also give the reasons where how the demographic dividend will be hampered this is the third paragraph fourth paragraph is nothing but the measures measures very clearly i have given here see telangana related measures Skill development, you know that task is doing it. Vaccine skill development program, we are having. Enabling entrepreneurship, T Pride, T Idea, T Prime, ICT policy 2.0. Also talks about the skilling purpose. ICT policy also talks about skilling. So, skilling, skilling, skilling. Now, the another point here is youth, one is unskilled. Okay, N not with regard to skill. Youth is one is unemployed, another one is employed. Under unemployed, employed is nothing but already working. Under unemployed, you can have educated unemployment is one of the concept you know that. Educated unemployed. I am educated but still I don't have a job. I am educated but still I don't have a job. So, youth here is skilled but does not have a job. What we should give them? Give them a loan. We should give them a loan. They will contribute in the economic growth. They will produce a service. They will produce a good. And they will contribute in the economic growth. That's why youth can be harnessed by both skilling and both by 
सेल्फ एम्प्लायमेंट नथिंग बट एनेबलिंग ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप सो तेलंगाना गवर्नमेंट इज हैविंग स्किल डेवलपमेंट स्किल डेवलपमेंट स्किल डेवलपमेंट एंड एनेबलिंग ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप इज ऑल्सो देर टी प्राइड टी आइडिया वेल यूर आई राइटिंग दिस हियर टू लाइन्स हियर टू लाइन्स हियर थ्री फोर लाइन्स हियर टू लाइन्स इनफ देन टू एनपावर वुमेन टू मेक दी वुमेन ऑन पार विथ मैन ओके ट्रेड स्कीम इज देर टू लाइन्स महिला उद्यमा निधि स्कीम उद्योगिनी स्कीम टू टू लाइन्स लाइक दैट यू हैव टू राइट ओके आफ्टर राइटिंग बिकॉज द क्वेश्चन वॉज अन ओपन एंडेड सो यू कैन नॉट रेस्ट्रिक्ट ऑल ऑफ यूर मेजर्स ओनली टू तेलंगाना दैट्स वाई यू हैव टू ऑल्सो कंसिडर वॉट ओके इंडिया ऑल्सो कंसिडर इंडिया राइट सो इंडिया इज ऑल्सो रनिंग प्रोग्राम्स टू हारनेस द स्किल्स ऑफ द यूज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वॉट स्किल इंडिया मिशन इयर ऑब्जेक्टिव पी एम मुद्रा इयर ऑब्जेक्टिव लोन्स प्रधानमंत्री एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेशन प्रोग्राम इयर ऑब्जेक्टिव टू एम्पावर वुमेन इंडिया इज ऑल्सो हैविंग ए सपरेट स्कीम कॉल्ड स्टार्टअप इंडिया एंड स्टैंड अप इंडिया स्टार्टअप इंडिया एंड स्टैंड अप इंडिया दिस इज हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू राइट यूर आंसर लास्ट इन द कंक्लूजन दस बाई टेकिंग द वेरियस मेजर्स गवर्नमेंट ऑफ तेलंगाना एंड इंडिया has been continuously pursuing to make the india as a skill india and to make the youth as a power block and a building block of the country however the pace of skilling is uh, at the lower lower side okay government should strengthen the mechanism in order to make sure that the youth should get the skills at the earliest and subsequent amount of uh, up job opportunities should be created like that you can end your answer this is how you have to write your model question and answer so what we have discussed very properly we have given a introduction definition according to united nation population fund india is having youth telangana is having youth properly i told according to telangana abstract statistic 2021 telangana is having 43% of what youth between 15 to 40 years good amount of youth we are having so we are also young state then you should give in the body of content the relation between demographic dividend and economic growth small one so you is here this particular answer can be uh, can be written in 200 words no need to worry about it okay in the in the uh, test series when we are taking the classes you will be properly knowing that we are doing that this in a very concise way you require a flow chart here okay those people who have not watched my how to prepare for mains answer was there i have given you a grid of evaluation in the grid of evaluation i told that whenever one some marks are also given to flow chart and diagram to a particular question if you don't write that flow chart or diagram then you will not get that particular one or two marks so here flow chart is important then democratic dividend faces what kind of challenges after writing this this is a one page okay one side of the paper one page you will write this another page you will write the schemes and the second paper one page this side you will write in this this complete things this side you will write all these schemes so this is the paper is over another paper half paragraph or three four lines you are going to conclude so 200 words that is less than 200 words it's very easy to concise so definition given india related information telangana related information economic growth impediments and all measures are discussed very properly all measures are discussed this is how you have to prepare for your every question the questions will not be direct my dear students the questions will be what indirect also okay another question i will give you which you can write in the comment section livestock sector okay livestock sector has assumed dominance with respect to contribution in agriculture gsva okay livestock sector has assumed dominance with respect to its contribution in gsva okay according to socio economic outlook 2021 okay than the cropping sector means 2014 nunchi cropping sector e agriculture allied sector lo cropping sector e ekwa contribute chesindi till 2021 varaku anta after 2021 dom a uh, livestock sector is contributing highest to the agriculture gsva why 
explain the trends of livestock sector and what measures are taken by the government of Telangana, what measures are taken by the government of Telangana in order to, so, uh, taken by the government of Telangana so that livestock sector has assumed what? Importance. So I have given you a question, pause the video, write down by yourself, now we will discuss that also. Okay, right. Then after writing it, cross check with my answer. See, cropping sector has remained dominant within the agriculture sector till 2021. Means from 2014 to 2021, cropping sector only dominated. Within agriculture GSVA, cropping sector was contributing highest till 2021, where after that, livestock sector has replaced cropping sector as the dominant sector under the agriculture ally sector. What are the contributions that led to the growth of this livestock sector? Okay, so like that questions will come, very tricky questions will come. So livestock sector, I have given an introduction. Livestock sector being part of agriculture sector has been playing a very significant role supplementing family incomes and generating employment opportunities in the rural sector. Particularly among landless small and marginal farmers, the farmers which are having small and marginal lands only, they will only have what agriculture they will do, they will uh, what maintain the buffaloes, sheep etc. Okay, they will do both animal husbandry and and agriculture because the lands are very very small they cannot get enough money to survive that's the reason they follow was mixed farming they follow what mixed farming and only the uh, farmers which are having no land and the farmers which are having very very less area of land they generally go for this particular mixed farming so i have properly given it see i have given livestock is a part of agriculture sector it helps in supplementing family income means apart from agriculture it also gives some income to the family, farmer's family and it also generates employment because when you are having a uh, livestock farm also, a cow farm or a goat farm if you are having definitely you will require some labor to work no. So it also create what employment in the rural state. Particularly who will follow this? Landless, small, marginal farmers. Now after writing this second paragraph, salient features of life, livestock sector of Telangana, we should give some of the aspects about the life such a big sector now it has become without giving its nature and the features of the lifestyle sector you cannot go directly for the answer so national livestock census 2019 three lines social economic outlook 2022 three lines okay gva contribution of livestock sector you have to make a very proper uh, paragraph means a box where 2014 to 2021 how the livestock sector has contributed ranking of telangana in terms of livestock means such a big livestock sector is there do we assuming importance in the national scenario or not yes so these three line three line three line three line, one page will be covered with this total one page will be covered with this okay one side then you can see here later on you have to exp uh, you have to give the livestock sector okay agriculture livestock sector you can see here livestock is this much livestock is contributing 49 cropping sector is contributing 44 so over a period of time from 2014 to 2021 to 2022 livestock sector 2014 it was 38 percent contributing to the agriculture gsva 2014 livestock sector is contributing 38.5 by 2021 49 okay Ag uh, cropping sector 2014 54 by 2021 44 54 became 44 38 became 49 so basically cropping sector is now cropping sector is less than livestock sector you have to give this dub balls you have to write that okay that is one page is that in this pow page you have to write at the right side you have to write like this and you have to explain here whenever you give chart explain here it has been clear from the chart at the right hand side at the right hand side that cropping sector has been dominant since 2014 to uh, 2021 but due to various initiatives taken co covering the livestock distribution formation uh, operatives cooperatives subsidies credit availability availability livestock sector has emerged as a dominant sector so i have given a hint I have given a hint to the examiner who is correcting the paper, evaluator, I have given a hint. But due to the various initiative which are covering from livestock distribution completely, sheep distribution, buffalo distribution, formation of cooperative subsidies, that's why livestock sector has grown. So 
this is the at uh, one side one side of the page you will write all of this second side half half page you will write this one now you are going to write the measures taken by telangana government okay which led to which led to the dominance of livestock sector over a period of time so see here measures are there animal healthcare government of telangana has initiative initiated lot of measures animal health infrastructure vaccination etc veterinary biological research institution was established sunandini scheme rashtri gokul mission rashtri kamdhanu mission sheep distribution program buffalo distribution program telangana state sheep and goat development cooperative federation telangana jeevan insurance for the sheep 100 mobile veterinary clinics toll free number in case of any problem to your livestock incentive of rupees 4 per liter for milk see these are the these are the various initiatives taken by the government of telangana to promote livestock sector that is the reason livestock sector has now become very dominant sector than the cropping sector this is how conclusion also i will give you in our uh, test series whenever we are discussing this is how you have to go through your answers okay don't think that these are very elaborate those who don't know how to write it they will think that this is elaborate i will do this in 200 words no need to worry about it right thanks a lot for hearing to me have a nice day do subscribe to our channel and also do enroll in our courses so that you can get the best of mains examination and we hope that will make you successful in cracking the examination bye bye take care